so I just woke up to find out that some celebrities have started a campaign of fixing the country. But the good news is, his Excellency Nane Kufuado is only one person out of 30 something million people. So he cannot fix the country alone. We need to fix our attitude. Who run office BR, government agency office BR? Somebody wants bribe. Somebody wants to put something down. Police are taking bribe. And no, no, gov uh, president says, someone got it. President Akachu will be said, only move quiet home. Huh? When they give you job, you come today, you don't go. Is that the president's problem? Is, it the, is the president the reason why the entertainment industry has collapsed? Fix your attitude. Fix your mindset. And stop blaming an innocent man. He came to help. He's not Jesus. Fix your attitude first. Moto Tony. I've seen so many people come on social media and they say, uh, go and fix yourself. Uh, uh, go and pay tax. People don't pay taxes. Eh, yeah. So I said, no, I can can be. O be a new solution in the face of Kotoa Bama, buying say, or be fixed on one of them. Who could do line Musa or Kotoa Bama? Who could do line Musa? A buy no, a be boo or mine. And you have found a man boo. Oh, to a basse, a buy OBC, Mudi or mine a shaman, sir. Me met me up a boo or mine no. Nay, you never could deal me at two abama in the panel. Say a two abama in the panel. Next, the people are not satisfied with the governance. They have to ask, they have to demand. So, I'm a abino, a bayard, a papa, or a mino. And if you come and tell me that Ghanaians don't pay taxes, when the catch was a gun of phone to your tax, ya cast us some now, my caho. Every Ghanaian pay taxes. All the taxes, Ghanaians pay every tax. Every Ghana hire Tiano. But down for put your tax, or but down for our bottom service said, what bottom we in Hanam Krum, or top your water tax that so. Welcome to Good Afternoon Ghana. I'm Francesca Kakra Forsen. So the Supreme Court has quashed an order by the High Court that injuncted a planned demonstration by Fix the Country protesters. Do they have the all clear now to hold their demonstration or there are hurdles? Stay with us. We've got more coming up. Thanks for staying. You can join the conversation on social media. Go to Metro TV Ghana on all the platforms. I'll start by introducing my guests, and we'll be joined or we'll be joined via Zoom by DSP Efia Tenge. She's the head of public affairs at the Accra Region Police. Also by uh, Zoom is Amayal Debra, who is a blogger, and Amayal has been with us throughout this conversation. In the studio, we have lawyer Benjamin Antiedu. Um, he's a legal researcher and an author in addition. Ben, good afternoon to you and thanks for joining us. And it's good to see you again. Good to see you too. And from Fix the Country, we have Benjamin Darko. Um, he's a convener. Good afternoon to you. Good afternoon. Welcome and thanks for joining. We have another sure. convener, Brownson Adachi. Good afternoon to you and thank you, gentlemen and ladies. Good gentlemen afternoon. Gentlemen and lady. Um, what we're going to do is I'm going to take my audience through... Uh, the Fix the Country trajectory or the trajectory of the campaign just to give an idea um, where we are, where we started from and where we are and then we'll, we'll kick start with the conversation um, either with one of you guys or the police. So all of this started in April or that's when um, the, the mainstream media got wind of it in April uh, when the Fix the Country campaign began. It started with a hashtag and what people or what young Ghanaians were calling for was better living conditions from expensive rent to unemployment those were some of the issues and then come may 6 may 6 police secured an ex-party injunction barring campaigners uh, from embarking on a planned protest on may 9. so may 9 angry Ghanaian you took fix the country protest to social media after that injunction and then may 12 
the IGP served notice to fix the country campaigners that they cannot proceed with their demonstration because of COVID-19. On June 4, some personnel of the Ghana Police Service clashed with the Fix the Country protesters at the premises of the Accra High Court hearing their case. On June 8, Supreme Court set aside the High Court order that indefinitely barred Fix the Country campaigners from demonstrating. June 8, the Ghana Police Service has advised the public to disregard any call to demonstrate uh, by the Fix the Country Convenience. And June 9, the police says that they've got reasons and they, they're given reasons uh, as to why some Ghanaians uh, should not hit the streets uh, for better living conditions. They find uh, the reason for the campaign non-compelling. June 14, that's ahead. There's a hearing at the High Court. And this is coming from an, an affidavit filed by uh, the police service. So this is where we are so far. I want to start really um, with DSP, if you think. DSP, if you can hear me uh, on the Zoom, I'm hoping that we have a better con connection. Tell us why uh, it appears that the police is bent on not allowing or not having this demonstration happen. Yes, uh, thank you very much and uh, thank you for the audience. Yes, uh, first of all, I want to disagree with you by uh, your preamble saying that um, the police is bent on just allowing the demonstration to be carried on or to go on. Um, as far as the command is concerned, all this hula balu about a fix the country demonstration, as you have earlier narrated, started with a notification that the police received on the conveners. They brought us um, their notification by the conveners of fix the country protest. And so when we got that, um, we met them and uh, we told them in uh, plain statements that um, yes, for some time now, the restrictions on COVID had not been lifted and that uh, we would prefer that they postpone their demonstration until a further date where the restrictions will be lifted that will give all of us the go ahead. That is one police's responsibility to give them the necessary security and for them to also go on the demonstration because going on demonstration is not an absolute right because the police also has a role to play there, which has been prescribed by the law, that is the Public Order Act. And so this did not go down well with the conveners. They, however, stated in all other platforms that they were not going to heed to what the police was advising on, because we only did that on the grounds of public health. And so we had to go to the High Court, that is the Criminal Division 1, for the High Court to issue a restraining order on the convenience to prevent them from going on the demonstration. And if you got a copy of that order, even the High Court even stated that on any other day, they should not go on this demonstration and any other day. And based on this, the convenience took the police or applied to the Supreme Court this time, asking the Supreme Court to put aside or set aside the restraining order that the police had gone for, you know, against them, against the convenience, or against uh, those who were seeking to demonstrate. And so yesterday was the day that the case was actually called at the Supreme Court and heard. And so our legal directorate were ably represented at the Supreme Court. And at the mm. end of the day, um, the reliefs, that the two reliefs that the conveners of the Fix the Country demonstration were seeking from the Supreme Court. First of all, the first relief they were seeking for, I still have their relief within, but in, a, in summary, first of all, they were asking the Supreme Court to set aside the restraining order. That was mm -hmm. the first relief that they sought from the Supreme Court. And secondly, they were asking the Supreme Court to restrain the Ghana Police Service from unlawfully, that is their own words, 
from unlawfully interfering in the uh, constitutional rights of the convenience of the fifth the country demonstration. So in their own words, this is what they sent to the Supreme Court. This is what, this is what they applied for. These were the two reliefs that they applied for. And so at the end of the day, it, it was granted that, yes, the applications have been granted in parts. The first one, which is setting aside the restraining order, has been granted. But however, the second one, if I, if I, if I have been coached well, the judge, that is um, Judge Apple, his lordship Judge Apple, stated that, yes, for this particular one, no. And so here, we only came out based on news reports we have monitored all on social media, or most social media platforms, that they have their go ahead now to go on the demonstration, which we thought that, no, that was not the explanation, or that is not the uh, understanding we all have, because the substantive case, that is the real merit of the case, is actually to be to take place on the 14th of uh, June, this time around, at the high court, the very high court that placed an injunction on them. And so if some people would report and say that they have the go ahead, to go ahead with the demonstration, we thought that no, that was a bit misleading. So we brought that release out to put in a proper context to advise all of us that yes, from what we are monitoring on social media, that is not it. And so on the 14th of June, which is the, the day the substantive case will be heard at the High Court, the Criminal Division one, that is when the, the, the parts that the fix the country demonstrators through their convenience are going to even respond to the, the earlier motion that the police sought from the, the court. So well. this is where we are. Very and well. uh, I don't know if you you really my my explanation. So this you're, is where you're, I, I, I agree with very, I, very well. I hear and I understand your explanation, and um, I also he understand your disagreements. That's why in my question I said the police appeared, but the question really for the police is is about the selectivity in in, in enforcing the law. So for for the fix the country protesters, it would appear to them that they cannot they are not being allowed. Uh, to have their demonstration um, because the police doesn't find it compelling, as has been said, and also because of COVID-19 restrictions. But they, they point to um, a recent f funeral by a, a famous politician, a funeral ceremony, uh, Kojo Ousefri, popularly known as Sir John. Um, where was the police when this funeral was happening? And we saw people, politicians, political leaders, what have you, walking around, some of them in clear breach of COVID-19 protocols. Where was the police then? Yes, um, first of all, let me state categorically that I speak for the regional command and I'll be able to address any issue that pertains to this region. Secondly, this issue of face the country demonstration has been pending before even the so-called full -up. So if people are, are making comparisons and drawing the police to what has happened in Kumasi, where I am saying I cannot comment on, I think that that would be very unfair because the issue of fix the country demonstration has been on the table since um, May or April, or I don't even remember the exact date when they called followers to, to this demonstration. And so if something has happened over the weekend and you are trying to draw a crowd region police into that, I think that that would be very unfair on our part. That's no, I don't think. Mm -hmm. The police's grounds on, on, on stating why we thought that the, 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 the demonstration should not hold, it's, it's based on the Public Order Act. If you go to the Public Order Act 1994, Act 491, at, or when, when you go there, the, the um, fourth regulation. Or probation. It says that when the police has reasonable grounds to believe that if the demonstration held, that it, it will lead to violence, it is going to endanger public safety, public health, and the running of essential services, 
the police can can ask, advise the conveners to postpone. And so since the beginning of this notification, the police's um, decision has been just on this uh, health grounds here in Accra. So if uh, we have to be compared with what is happening elsewhere, where I cannot talk about, then I think that will be really unfair on our part. And as far as I am concerned, it is an issue that is even pending as to whether the, the court will side with the reasons the police has given already, or they will side with the reasons yet to be given by the convenience of the fix the country demonstration. I think that we should be given the, the time for, for the courts itself to decide on whose reason to go with. Until then, I believe Very that well. the case that is still pending, yes. and that we should I wait guess... until it is actually called and a judgment is given on, on it. I guess you draw the distinction between a car region and a shanty. That's fine, but it's really it's really about the police because in all of this is the police service is, is the inspector general of police uh, that will lead all of this. And and it's a fair I think it's a fair and a reasonable question to ask. Um, the, the the funeral of Sir John did not just happen at the weekend, and so yes, fix the country is pending at the court. Um, even, even when they announced their, their planned protest, the police quickly went to court and, and secured uh, an injunction. So why couldn't that have been done as well? That's the question. Why is the Sir John funeral being treated fairly uh, differently from Fix the Country? But you've made the case that it's, it's, you cannot speak to that because you speak for um, um, Ashanti, pardon me, Accra region, and, and we appreciate that, DSP. Um, thankfully, we have a lawyer in here to, to, to you know, digest uh, that properly. But I want to go back to the two conveners in the studio. Um, what's your understanding of uh, the Supreme Court caution, uh, the High Court order that sought to restrain perpetually the demonstration you had, you had, you had planned to go on? Um, our understanding is that the injunction that was given first um, was given on the grounds of um, health um, concerns that um, COVID is going to be a threat, should we hold a demonstration? That was the reason that um, the police or the injunction that was served on us contained. We went to the Supreme Court to set aside that injunction, and the police went to the High Court for an extension of that injunction. Now, our question is, we've not um, brought out any dates for a demonstration. So what is the injunction at the High Court going to save? What are they getting the extension for? Is it for a, a time machine? Is the Ghana Police Service using a time machine? And um, the PRO for the Ghana Police Service made mention of um, an event happening after um, Fix the Country. But I'd like to draw attention that in mid-April, we had protesters in La demonstrate to protect their lands from encroachment. That was a demonstration. It was a protest. Where was the Ghana Police Service? Or is it because that, that is not something that targets a bigger or broader topic, so they decided to just neglect that part? Or is it that they are trying to deliberately pinpoint and then target with the country from happening? Or they are trying to silence the voices of Ghanaian youth? Is that what they are trying to do? Or do some selective bias judgment that they are just going after? For you, do you think that the, the, the ruling from the Supreme Court gives you the all clear to go ahead with your demonstration? Is that the understanding that you have? Not necessarily. You know, we went to court with a proper case. Now, when we, we say a proper case, this is what we mean. You realize that the injunction was set secretly without the notice of the convenience. Mm -hmm. Now, by law, we are, the, uh, the court is supposed to give us a fair hearing before the injunction to sit. Now, that was not Can done. you kindly turn on your microphone, pardon me, and then maybe do a recap, because oh, we, okay. we might have missed a, a bit of Okay, it. so what I was saying is this. It doesn't necessarily give us that go ahead. Now, we went to court with a proper case, and this is the case. We realized that the, uh, the regional command went to court secretly to seek an injunction without our notice. Now, so we went to court so the Supreme Court will quash that injunction. Mm -hmm. Now, and that is what the Supreme Court did. That is what is supposed to be done. That is not a clear cut for us to demonstrate. Very well. What's yeah. your reaction to the second relief that was not granted? What you wanted the court to restrain the police from what unlawfully, unlawfully interfering, interfering with your constitutional right to demonstrate? Unlawfully interfering with our constitutional right to demonstrate, and that was not granted. And that tells us that we are in a broken system. That tells us that 
that is uh, that makes our you got campaign one out evident. of two reliefs isn't that fair enough no. is that what the law should be is that a rule of law no should the police interfere with our uh, uh, fundamental right on unlawfully that is the question we should be asking but you you also need to appreciate that it is not a right in absolute yes but they can't interfere with it unlawfully Ben, can I throw you in here? I've got lots exactly. of tons of questions for you, but I want to throw you in here in the second okay. relief that was not granted. Exactly. Uh, but just to uh, draw a quick point, that you said the police went secretly to the court, that that is a lawful procedure, that where there's an emergency, you would think that if time is allowed to pass, there will be irreparable damage you know, to the citizenry or mm -hmm. maybe to the country. So you want to abate that by going to court. And that is founded under the CR 47, which is the High Court Civil Procedure Rules. But that is where the law sees that because it's an exception to the general rule that parties to a dispute must be heard fairly, okay, that is why it's given only 10 days. 10 days. So it's given 10 days, then within the 10 days, you cannot come on notice. And I think that is what the police did. They came on notice, and that is what is pending. Okay, so that this time, both parties will be heard, and then the court will give a determination on that. So on the second one, mm -hmm. on the second relief, I was, um, I read it, um, when I read the police communique, uh, I was a bit worried that, so the court said they were not going to restrain the police for unlawfully oh, no. in interfering. As to what unlawful interference is, is another matter, but nobody has the right to unlawfully interfere the enjoyment or the exercise of right of anybody. What does if it you mean? are talking about lawful interference, mm -hmm. that's why I'm saying that probably the court understood it to be like stop the police from interfering. But as the PRO, the National PRO said, the police has a legal role to play in the process, in demonstrations. So as for that, it's well founded. If they are doing exactly that, then that cannot be said to be unlawful. Okay. But let's say for no legal basis, if they stop you, okay, then that is where the unlawful interference is. And for that one, nobody, and I'm sure if the court has read it in that sense, it would have granted that. Or so it would mean take that it the as court didn't find that it was unlawful, the interference by the police is unlawful. Maybe out of the debate, uh, maybe the motion, the debate that followed um, um, the application didn't bring that one forcefully so that you, uh, maybe the council would have expanded on what constitutes or what constituted unlawful uh, interference. Um, because once we're able to establish that they are doing something beyond the law or outside the law, because that is the only part that you can say is unlawful. If they are acting pursuant to the Public Order Act, they are well founded there, but we have to now scrutinize what the law says and what they can do, which will constitute lawful activity. So that looking at the moves or the various moves by the police from when the ex-party injunction um, was obtained to, this, this, there appears to be a persistence in, in you know, proceeding with this case for them, which is not to, or, or to disallow. Are they within, entirely within the ambit yeah. of the law? Yes, that is intra virus. It was within the law. If you read the law, uh, the National um, PRO was trying to you know, deal with that aspect, but she paused at a mm -hmm. certain point. I, th what I heard earlier that was worrying was to say that their reasons for demonstration was not compelling. Yeah. The law doesn't talk about the reason for the demonstration at all. You see, then what, what would be the right? It's talking about whether there are grounds for public safety, uh, you know, public order and mm -hmm. all those things. It's, there's nothing about you ascertaining or, you know, considering the purpose for the, 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 the demonstration. You don't have that. So if you think that there is um, a ban on public gathering, deal with that. But even that, you threw the question about whether we are applying the rules, uh, you know, across the board. Okay, so you cannot just say that the reason for my demonstration is not compelling. Okay. You have no such power, but there, deal with it. But the point is that if the police knew about the, 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 the existence of the EI, then they, should, they, they shouldn't have even gone to the high court in the first place. Of course, there's a law that you shouldn't gather. Okay, so let them just uh, tell them that we are not allowing you to go because there is in force a law 
uh, the executive instrument, which is pinched on the uh, imposition of restrictions act. Okay. And then disobedience of that amounts to you know, disobedience of the law. So actually, there's a law in force. So we shouldn't have even gone in the first place. Hmm. So these are the extra actions that is letting them have the perception that, of course, there's a deliberate attempt you know, uh, uh, you know, to frustrate uh, them. On that point, I want to check if uh, DSP uh, Fiatinga is still on the line with me. Um, hello, DSP. So the question I would want to hello. then ask is, why, why the need to go to court um, when there is, as the lawyer says, a law in place, the, the, the restrictions, the imposition of restrictions, which uh, breach of which there are sanctions? All right. Uh, thank you very much for that question. But before I go to that, let me address this. I want to thank the lawyer for, for also um, adding up to the earlier clarification that uh, your your um, guests, those for the fix the country demonstration, your guests were seeking. It okay. shows that there are a number of things that they lack basic understanding in. So I will thank the lawyer for explaining, specifically when it has to do with they assuming and thinking and misinforming their followers that the police, first of all, were or had to seek quickly go to the courts. I think that was, it was, that was not properly placed at all. But uh, I wouldn't want to go there because I'm also going to offer the same explanation that has earlier been offered by the lawyer, so that is fine. Then secondly, uh, one of them also indicated that yes, they were comparing the ban on the restrictions and that of the la protesters. Let me also educate the general public and also your, your guests in the, in the, in the studio that uh, if we sit here now and there is any issue that would lead to public insecurity now and police sit down and say that yes, this issue, because of a ban on restrictions, the police does not act. Then the police is, would be taking all of us to a, a, a dangerous thing that we cannot manage. If something has, has come up spontaneously, a police that is to ensure that the law and order is maintained, sit aloof and say that this one, there is a ban on um, public gathering, and so the police do not act. That one will be doing a, a great disservice to us all. And I think that all of you will come back to us and find out why the police has refused to act in the first instance. The issue about the law, laws they are talking about, it is not police that sanctioned that um, a public gathering. The police will not do that. Well, because the police knows that there is a responsibility on us, especially when it comes to public events, special events like a demonstration, where the police role in, 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 in this demonstration is to ensure that we guard the people through the, the roots of the demonstration where we know that rights of one person ends at where somebody's right begins. It behoves on us to, to plan on every demonstration that come on our table, looking at the pros and cons, sit down and look at the security arrangements for that protest or demonstration before we go on that demonstration. And we are saying that for a law-abiding institution like the police, we will not sit down and go and guard people when, of course, we know that there is an injunction, uh, when we know there is a law that bans public gathering at this point. And it is not only the fix that the, the country. I think since the, we went into um, in position of restrictions, there are about six demonstrations that the police has still remained, you know, um, consistent in our decisions, saying that no, because of the ban, we will not be able to provide the security. The Public Order Act gives police a certain responsibilities, just like organizers. It says that when they want to organize, ensure that you take one, two, three into consideration. So we plan, we don't just go. Very so well. if you think that you notify us and you think that no, we, we need to go because we have notified you, that is wrong. DSP, well, 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 well said DSP, but I, I just want you to bring you back to the question about the option to go to court instead of enforcing the Impositions um, Act. Yes, we, we needed and it was a matter of necessity that the police goes to court. Why? Because after we have advised 
the group to to postpone their events, their demonstration. They went about calling their protesters and calling their followers that no, we were not going to heed to police's advice. And here in the command, we know that yes, one of the tools we have used since time memorial is the use of injunction. And of course, I believe that if the police had not gone for that injunction, we would have seen the, the illegalities that would have gone on on the streets of Accra, where it would be difficult for us to manage. And so for the police's angle, we thought that that was the best decision. I think that we have a number of options to resort to. Fair but much. we thought that this was the best option at this point for the police to resort to. And that was the going to the court for an injunction where we made it public for everybody to know that there is uh, it's actually an in injunction on all of us so that with that one, people will know that we we'll respect that. Um, DSP, please clarify this for me so that the Imposition of Restrictions Act um, is not limited to demonstrations, correct? Exactly. So it will come back to my earlier question about what appears as the selectivity of it. Well, you're preventing protests uh, or demonstrations which may flout COVID-19 protocols, but other um, events are being allowed. Yes, um, you know, that is what the public would say, you know. Uh, and as much as we are concerned, uh, it is not all of them that will be able to control. Some of them, I also understand that some of them, um, they are organized at the blind side. That is why I remember there was even a religious activity at the trade fair where they are being hauled to the court as I speak to you now. But um, some areas like uh, the beach where I, I, I remember, because even during the Easter festivity where people mostly go to the beaches, that the merrymakers going to the beaches to have fun and all that. We tried as much as possible. Look at the vast coastal lands we have here, coastal areas here in Accra. We made sure that we deployed heavily right from Sakumono to Lazo, Dansuma to Kokobite, just to ensure that people do not flout some of these. We understand that sometimes we ourselves we will be handicapped. And it is not all the, 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 the events that I can say that, oh, police for sure need to be there. But, but those this that is, we this can manage an, within, DSP, we will do forgive me, let me Forgive me, but let me butt in here. This is an event that saw state actors, including the president. And some people are saying that the police would have to haul all of those people who were there and breached the COVID-19 protocols, you should haul them uh, to the court or, or, or prosecute them, well, except for the president who cannot be sued. Some of these will be members of the executive of which the, the, the police service will be part of. So how, how will this be on your blind side? I know I've put a lot in yeah. there, but if you can, yes. No, 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 no. I was talking to, I, I, initially, I think that I spoke to you about what the change in my region. I don't know the nitty gritties of what went on in Kumase where everybody is referring to. I don't know what the uh, police there are saying, but as far as I'm concerned, here in Accra, what I told you about uh, the nitty gritties or some of the things that the police probably will not, is not everything that will be able to handle or control. Uh, I was referring to my jurisdiction here in Accra. I have earlier told you that what happened in Kumase, I think that you can channel your, your, your questions to the command. Probably they will tell us what went on the breaches Very well. and all that. So if you have not been able to find out from them, where do I stand in answering some of these questions? Very well. But at some point, we were speaking generally about the police. So I thought to uh, uh, put that across. That's fine. I want to come back to the studio and speak to uh, a lawyer here with us, uh, Benjamin Antiedu. Benjamin, I want, to, I want you to so give us uh, an understanding. We've heard from the protesters what they think. We've heard the police as well. They're both uh, interested parties. Uh, from, from your perspective, what is the Supreme Court's uh, ruling? Caution the, the injunction uh, by the High yeah. Court saying. Okay, so we have to look at that early or the first injunction or the restraining order mm -hmm. that the police sought from the high court. So um, from the reports, okay, the high court 
granted the restraining order indefinitely. Okay, that until there is um, there's a lifting of the ban on public gathering, you cannot have it. Okay, so that is when they went to court. Actually, you didn't go just because I've, I've read your the grounds for the um, supervisory invocation, but what you went to court to say is that the High Court actually acted out of jurisdiction, okay, because they can only give um, a 10-day restraining order in the case of S party applications, and then it was given beyond that, I mean, limitlessly. Okay, okay, what, so the High Court procedure rules? Civil procedure did, rules. Did, did the courts not know that? That's the question, the, the, the obvious court, question. The court here, um, the Lady um, Justice, probably would have uh, definitely knew that, but I think because of the way the application or the motion was, uh, you know, couched, that because of the COVID restrictions, okay, mm -hmm. so we are seeking this order because of that, not because there is an emergency. If you don't do this, something will happen. But actually, that should be the grounding for SPT applications, that there's going to be an eruption, you know, to use it crudely. There's going to be an eruption of something of, that will breach our public um, um, health you, you know, regulations. So please intervene. So the court, in, in direct response to it, will say that then until the ban is lifted. Okay, but that actually breached the law also. That's why the Supreme Court agreed with them. That not that you were not heard, but that the court, in giving the order, went out of its jurisdiction. Okay, Very so well. when uh, upon the expiry of the 10-day uh, restraining order, that's when you now go on notice. And I could glean from what they said that that is the, what they term as the substantive matter before the high court. It's not actually the substantive matter. The, this, this is still the, the application for the restraining order. But this time, you are letting all the parties no. come to court, debate that probably if they want to oppose the uh, motion, do so. And then at the end of the debate, the court will give a determination. So now the point is, what is the implication? What is the effect of this? Mm -hmm. The effect is that be, uh, before the, the Supreme Court's um, question order or the, the intervention by the Supreme Court, there was this uh, indefinite, indefinite uh, restraining order. So now that has been removed. So that's why you could hear Justice Apau asking that, will not even seem to be directly granting you what you are asking for, even in the, in the, in the first um, relief. Because technically, the maximum the court could give was 10 days. So it, once the 10 days has elapsed, there's nothing else to even to quash. So when we are even saying that, oh, they quash, they quash, they have, the court did not quash anything. The court said, by operation of law, the 10 days has expired, and there's nothing there. So and as at... And, and and from the period of expiration of the 10 days, yes. can they do their protest? They, they can do that, but the difficulty is you have to now go and comply with the, with the uh, Public the Order public Act, order which act. means you have to give notification to the police. Okay. Well, because once this one has been more or less cancelled, mm -hmm. the slate is cleaner. Okay, just that, unfortunately, you have at the end a pending... The June 14... Uh, uh, yes, uh, okay. application or notice. Okay, before we get to June 14, let's, let's try and settle this Public Order Act requirement of notifying the police. Uh, the argument will be that the police uh, will, may, um, and, and this, is, this is not a kick against DSP, the police may use that uh, to decide whether or not the, the, the protest will happen when the protesters merely have to give the notice. So explain to us what... What is this notice that should be given? Yes, so definitely the law has a purpose, and the purpose is for the police to play its role well within the law. Okay, so the notification, if you read the entire provision on notification to the police and what they can do, you know, advising when there are dangers to public safety, public health, and all that, use that as a basis to advise you and even the route you go, because you furnish all the information, so that based on that, they will know whether there are potential dangers in respect of those grounds. So when they advise you and you still say you will not do it, mm -hmm. that is when the law allows them to go to court for the restraining order. Okay, 
So you look at this and you look at a substantive right, guaranteed right to demonstrate. This is where you may find that even though the law seeks to accommodate and give a procedure for the exercise of the constitutional right, you somebody, or maybe if you look at our the, the history of how the police has handled demonstrations, it may appear that it's being used to obstruct uh, you know, efforts to demonstrate. And that is where uh, you may feel uncomfortable that that constitutional right is being underplayed because the right given to the police should be treated as an exception. Mm. Okay, because when it comes to constitutional rights, is it being know, treated as an exception and in that this is, case? That is where uh, this is a factual uh, analysis to make. It's not legal. Okay, so mm -hmm. we are all uh, aware of the, the activities of the police regarding demonstrations. So we, the people of Ghana, should judge. Okay, and if you feel that probably is being used in a sense to curtail the exercise of that right, then we should do something about it. DSP, okay. is, it, is it fair if, if these protesters and other Ghanaians as well feel that at some point uh, the police use the, the, the Public Order Act to prevent demonstrations? Do you think it's, it's a reasonable criticism? Yes, um, thank you. Um, I think that that would be unfair because... Um, as I earlier indicated, your right to demonstrate is not absolute. And so um, that is why the Public Order Act has um, come up with certain modalities for all of us to follow, including the police, to ensure that uh, your right to demonstrate does not infringe on another person's rights. And so if at all times the police is looking at the general safety of all, especially within the public space. And people are assuming and thinking that this is a weapon the police is using against us to prevent us from demonstrating. I think that um, that would be unfair. And, uh, but um, it is unfair again, because we also think that the five clear days that has been given by the Public Order Act is mm -hmm. also too small. Why? Because if you look at all the procedures, the back and forth, the 48 hours um, that you have to reply to the police and all that, and, and, and you, you just realize that you have no time at all. And so in order for us to be on the side of safety, always we are also rushing to court to ensure that there's a restriction on uh, the demonstrators. Otherwise, if we had more days, let's say 10 days, for the police to dialogue with these people um, that the demonstrators. I think that to give example time, where even the police will not even seeking for an injunction, but we would even go to the court on notice. But if we say five clear days, it's the same time they need to meet us. Uh, within this same space, we need to meet on um, whatever the nature of your demonstration of notice is. Then again, we move on to our reply to them. Then they also come back with their reply then when we have reasons to believe that they, they do not even want to um, comply with what the police has advised, then we go to court. At this time, do we have the, the luxury of space or time to be able to exhaust all the, um, the procedures that we, we need to follow before the demonstration? So it is so because of the limited time that the police has faced okay. to be able to put our arrangements in place. Because we are looking at security in general. To be very frank with you, I, I don't think that we have any other ill motive in stopping people from demonstrating, apart from the general safety, because we have seen and heard demonstrations that has had turned volatile or had, had turned, uh, let me say, very rowdy and disturbing at the end of the day. So at any point in time, with the police, through the command, especially the regional commander, is seeking to ensure that they exhaust all avenues so that they will also be at peace and not have any issue that they need to respond to later. Very so well. it is just um, a matter of ensuring the general security of all and not any the, ill motive that we seek. Very well, protect. the police has to do their job. Um, quick comments from, from Fix the Country representatives here before I take my break. Um, from what um, the police um, said, 
there are reasons um, for getting the injunction. One of them was uh, our reasons for demonstrating about the successive um, governments that have come into power and they've not done what the citizens are expecting. It's not a compelling reason. It wasn't an issue of security. They summed everything up that what we are pushing I think to for. be fair to them, they talked about the possibility of COVID spreading. Yeah, but I'm saying that it wasn't just on the basis of security. They said that the reasons we had for the demonstration wasn't compelling enough to give us a go ahead. And the documents we sent to uh, the police, we, we listed or we gave guidelines on how to deal with COVID. We, we, we feel that Ghana is old enough that we should have the freedom to contain and have people okay. go on the streets, even within the midst of pandemic, because you can't, you can't limit our rights because of a virus. A virus okay. that the World Health Organization has given guidelines on how to deal with it and how to live with it and cope with it. Let me bring your colleague in. What, what are you expecting on um, Monday, 14th June? Okay, so we are expecting that uh, the High Court will do their best to serve uh, what they have been protecting all these years. Now, I ask myself, if the police really care about the citizens, okay, if they care about the citizens, they wouldn't be running back and forth with us when it comes to issues of uh, a demonstration. So we are only uh, praying that the court will come to our favor. And then, because there have been a lot of instances where people... You're, pray you're praying the court will, will, will what, rule in your favor. Yes. I'm sure the police will, will be looking for same. But let's take, a, <laughs> let's take a break here. Let's take a breather here. And when we come back, I'll bring you some messages and then we'll wrap up the conversation. Stay with us on Good Afternoon Ghana. Welcome back to Good Afternoon Ghana. Some quick messages uh, before we proceed. Uh, my name is Jones from Tema. My question is why were politicians allowed to organize rallies and campaigns during 2020 elections? Um, Kelvin from Tema says, please ask if the marketplace is a gathering ground and what they are doing to ensure people are observing the COVID protocols. It seems when it comes to politicians, COVID protocols should not be affected. Another message says the police are, an, are with an eye, whether present at the funeral ground or not. They should act on this case. Um, Carl sends this. He says the police should stop making insinuations as though fix the country conveners. And for that matter, the youth are ignorant. Ghana police is one body and it doesn't really matter if it's Kumasi or Accra. The police should stop acting like it's us against them. Um, what we are all pushing for is for all of us, and so they should willingly provide support for a successful demonstration. Uh, this is from Amos in Sunyane. He says, in fact, the police should understand the plight of the youth and act accordingly. The, country's, or the country or state is in a mess, and something must be done about it. Please ask DSP Efia Tenge about the Accra Stadium last Sunday, a game between Accra, Hearts of Oak, and Oli. Oli will be what? Olympics. Okay. Um, so she's listening. I'm sure she would speak to that. Please, uh, good afternoon. If the DSP is talking about COVID protocols, I am not, I do not agree with her. Is she saying what happened at the Sir John funeral and stadium are right? That's Noble Osuwem in Accra. Uh, Malik Adama says, good afternoon to your panelists and pretty DSP. Ghanaians are fully convinced that the police uh, always protect anything that will make the government unpopular. I think the IGP and ACP Kwesi Ofori uh, should remove political lenses, okay, and wear a national one. Okay, uh, your discussion is very educative and really enjoying it. I love your hairstyle, hostess. Well, thank you. Kofi from Suhum says, please, I'm a NAPCO trainee. Tell the government we are hungry. Last one from Wilson. He says, we all know in this country that the police do what the government say. War unto you if you try to expose the government in any way. Okay. Um, I can't exhaust the messages. But Benjamin, I'll give you the, the final comments because I'm out of time. Um, mm -hmm. you, you were making a fantastic uh, contribution during the break about uh, your admiration for the, the protesters and... Um, 
the youth of Ghana? Yes, I was saying that the youth are today's leaders. Uh, in the sense that whatever happens today in our governance will have uh, you know, a more greater impact on the youth. Okay, we say that the children are the future leaders, so what's the place for the youth? So if they are doing a nationalistic activity, then the support should be there. We, are, we must, we can uh, you know, overlook the potential effect or the impact or spread of COVID-19. But I think that, that, that if the discourse is a very dispassionate one, calm will prevail and we all know the, the way to go. And I expect the court to give that highlight. Even I don't expect the court to rule that they could even go ahead with it because of COVID, unless you're able to give a fair guideline on how this will not spread COVID-19. Okay. I think that that's the only way the court okay. will rule that. But beyond that, we should have a, a way to discuss the matter that Demonstrations are constitutionally guaranteed rights. Well said. And then well it's said. an exception we'll it to deny it. Thank you, uh, DSP Efia Tenge, for joining us um, on the Zoom uh, line. She's the head of public affairs uh, for the Accra Region Police. Thank you also for watching, and thank you, gentlemen, in the studio. Um, I guess June 14 will come, and then we'll, we'll have a conversation, a post-mortem of that. Thank you also for watching. I'm Francesca Kakrafos, and bye-bye. Metro TV, insightful and inspiring moments.